plot thickens. The missing gun. Stefan Paddock bought a high power Ruger rifle just hours before arriving in Las Vegas. But the $600 weapon was not found among his 23 weapon arsenal of death. Could this be another case of smoke and mirrors to muddy up the waters? Or is this another missing puzzle piece? I'm going to be coming out with a video shortly. And it's probably going to be the most wildest view explanation, but it's going to make sense for a lot of things like the amount of bullet cases that were found in Paddock's hotel on the Mandalay just does not add up to the amount of rounds that was fired into the crowd. So stay tuned for that one. It's going to blow your mind. It might even blow my mind too because this type of information is quite privy to the people at the top that don't want this information to get out. Just hours before arriving in Las Vegas, the rifle was not part of his 23 weapon arsenal found in sniper nests in the Mandalay Bay Hotel. Gun shop worker Skipper Spess revealed Paddock was calm and normal when he bought the weapon at around 3 p.m. on September of 28. Skipper said Paddock was a regular visitor to the store and he had served him four times in total. Mary Lou Danley, whose police named a person of interest in the case, also came into the shop once, but Skipper said nothing seemed to miss. Mass killer Stephen Paddock bought a high-powered hunting rifle just hours before he arrived in Las Vegas on his mission of death. But bizarrely, the rifle wasn't one of the 23 weapons found by the police in the Sniper Nest Hotel Suite. Gee, isn't that odd? That the most accurate weapon that he had is missing. Hmm. Paddock paid $600 for a Ruger American 308 bolt action rifle with an 18 inch barrel and a full round capacity from Guns and Guitars in his hometown of Mesquite. You want to check for a sniper round bullet. These forensics experts. He then calmly drove 80 miles to check in at Mandalay Bay Hotel on the Vegas Strip. A gunsmith at the store revealed Paddock was calm and normal when he bought the weapons at around 3 p.m. on September 28, 2017. The worker who goes by the name Skipper Spess said it took around 20 minutes for the store to carry out vetting procedures and Paddock passed with flying colors, raising no alarm bells. He then left the shop with the weapon, but it's unclear what happened next. Did he decide against taking the rifle to Vegas and left it at home, or did he take it and leave it in his car? Skipper, an employee of Guns and Guitars in Mesquite, Nevada, stands guard outside the store, as the owner has been on the receiving end of death threats since the Las Vegas massacre. Paddock paid $600 for a Ruger American 308 bolt action rifle with an 18 inch barrel and 4 round capacity. But the gun was not found among his hotel arsenal. Well, why not? Maybe because it was used somewhere else? I'm going to leave that for the next video. Either way, the gun was not included as part of Paddock's arsenal of death. Skipper said Paddock was a regular visit to the store and he had served him four times in total. 
the gunsmith was bodyguard to the Nevada cattle rancher Clavon Bundy and was involved in the infamous 2014 Bunkerville Ranch standoff. Ah, what a coincidence. The standoff involved in an armed confrontation between supporters of Bundy and law enforcement following a 21 year legal dispute over grazing rights. He said Paddock bought just one of the guns that was found in his hotel suite from Guns Guitars. A Sig Sauer 716. The Swiss German made rifle fires large caliber 7.62 mm rounds and is a highly accurate weapon from the AR-10 range of guns. These weapons usually sell for around 3,500. But a week before the attack, he dropped into the store just two miles from his home in a retirement community and admired the Ruger rifle he would later also buy. Skipper said, he came in a week earlier and says, hey, you remember me? I'm Steve Paddock. And I said, I got some money for you because we sold one of his guns. So I go to the safe and I pull out the envelope and he's looking around and he says, hey, what's that rifle right there? And points out the Ruger. A photo leak Tuesday showed Paddock's body after he committed suicide in the hotel room. He fired on civilians from him. There also appears to be a letter on the table. Although the police haven't announced filing a suicide note. Now, people are so quick to say he committed suicide, right? Looks like there's some blood on his chest. He could have been shot in the chest. And somebody could have just stuck a pistol, put it in his brain. You also see that there's looks like it appears to be a respirator oxygen tank. Either a couple possibilities. He wasn't feeling too great, needed oxygen, or he thought about all the smoke buildup from firing the ammo that he needed to provide himself oxygen in order to breathe and continue out the assault. Or people, it's going to get back to my uh, video after this, or people just set it up like that because this is so thought and well planned out. And I'm going to tell you this is the perfect crime, the perfect cover up. These bump stocks, from what I've read, that there is a high malfunction rate of fire from using them, they jam up. This could be a reason why you would bring so many. He says he's not going to buy it. I'll think about it. So I gave him the money and he goes, then a week later on the 28th, he came in again and he bought it for 600 He never said he was going to use it for it. Yeah, like he's going to tell you. He was a normal guy. A typical customer. There was never any red flags. Nothing to raise concern. If he acted unusually or suspiciously in the store, I wouldn't have sold him the rifle. He didn't say anything about why he wanted to buy the rifle. We actually had one of his rifles on consignment hanging on the wall. He would buy something and bring it back. He brought a handgun to us before. We would buy it back from him. He passed all the vetting procedures. He had no criminal record. No one can understand why this happened. I'm just going to drop a few nuggets in here. There's a picture that supposedly he's staying in a crowd uh, with some left wing protesters and he's wearing a pink NASA shirt. This is not a 100% verifiable picture of, of him, but it looks pretty close to what he looks like. But you know, there is a Stefan Paddock in a FOIA, a Freedom of Information document that work for NASA and hence he's wearing a NASA shirt and this is in the same location area so he also was an accountant for Lockheed Martin did he do accounting for NASA as well they were crunching numbers and they're trying to figure out why is all this money missing from the deficit for 9-11 uh, what happened they, they admitted the day before that there was trillions of dollars missing and it could be something similar like this he was the missing link he had to go they could have said, hey, look, we're going to kill Mary Lou Danley and her family unless you do such and such and such. I'm just going to leave it at that. He passed all the vetting procedures. He had no criminal record. No one can understand why this happened. 
Skipper, who said Paddock had bought the three other guns from the shop in the past, none of which were used in the shooting, says Mesquite is awash with gun enthusiasts like Paddock. It's a small town, but there's a lot of retired cops, former military guys, ex-government spooks. They're all carrying. The worker said he was drinking in a bar on Sunday night when he watched a horror unfold on TV. At 3 a.m., he received a call from law enforcement in Vegas that wanted to run a name by him. When he heard Stephen Paddock, Skipper was shocked. As soon as he said the name, I knew who he was because I had only served him a few days earlier, he recalled. I know he liked country music, so then I'm thinking, he must have been after someone he knows. That was my first thought. I couldn't believe it, and after I got the call from law enforcement, I rushed straight to the store to check all records. The detective wanted to know any address listed and the serial numbers of any weapons he had purchased. Anyway, I started opening up the ATF books and they gave me four or five serial numbers, and I find they aren't from us. So he didn't buy them all from us. So they say, I'm going to read you some serial numbers, and there's one match, and it was a SIG rifle. That was the only one that he bought from us that he used. I called my boss, Chris Sullivan, and he came to the store as well. We were both really shocked that one of our customers was involved. Paddock's arsenal of death. While the exact extent of Paddock's catch is not yet clear, we know it included four DDM-4 rifles manufactured by Daniel Defense. The rifle featured a muscle flash suppressor, making it harder to tell where the weapon is being fired from. It also had a free float rail, allowing for a variety of attachments, including scopes and grips to enhance stability. Three FN-15 rifles made by FN America. They also feature a muscle flash suppressor and each buffer system, which reduced recoil and increases accuracy. At least one AK-47, a Russian-designed assault rifle. It was used by the country's military from 1945 and is still used by armies and rebel groups from around the world. Known for its simplicity and reliability, it fires a 7.62 39mm round, which makes it less accurate but more devastating than other semi-automatic rifles. Gotta throw that Russian rifle in there, right? At least one call AR-15. This rifle is known as the most popular in America, with an estimated 8 million homes around the country. It also has gained a dubious reputation as the weapon of choice for mass shooters, from movie theater killer James Holmes to San Bernardino terrorist Omar Mateen. Skipper said it was only later that they learned that the Ruger rifle, which had rail slots for a scope, Pack had bought wasn't in the hotel room but one of the guns that they had sold him months earlier. The guy was just a regular gun enthusiast. There was nothing special about him, Skipper said. He's not religious. He never talked about her religion. He never talked about politics. The worker said Pag's girlfriend, Mary Lou Danley, a police named a person of interest in the case, also came into the shop once. The only time we saw Mary Lou, Stefan was in the store looking around, talking to Chris. I guess she was in the car, and she opens the door and says, Are you done? And he says, Yeah. I'll just be a second. That was the only time we saw her. He was totally pleasant to her. Just said, I'll be a second, no problem. Skipper said Pat would have no problem getting the 23 guns inside of his minivan and smuggling them up the 32nd floor room for where he was staying. If you listen to one of the latest interviews from Paddock's brother, Eric Paddock, they're asking him, how did he get all these guns up? He even admitted that he had a problem with his knee and he wasn't in very good shape. He's like, ah, oh, he just probably paid some young kid 100 bucks to bring up all the weapons. Uh, he even said that. And I, thought, I thought that was kind of strange that he would say that or he would know that or think that or maybe he knew how he was, that he was in terrible shape. That obviously, he couldn't have brought all that up by himself. It, it kind of makes sense simply that, yeah, he probably did pay somebody, hey, bring this up for me. No problem. Pack left the shop after buying the mystery weapon, but it's unclear whether he left the rifle at home. He was a smart guy. He's not going to be caught going into the hotel with the weapon, Skipper said. But it's unclear whether he left the rifle at home or in his car. I don't think they're going to find this gun. And in one of my next videos, I'm going to give you a theory about what I think, maybe how this gun was used, and hopefully they can find one of these calibers of this sniper 
weapon there, which would prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was another person involved. He was a smart guy. He's not going to be caught going into the hotel with the weapons, Skipper said. The Vegas casinos have firearm safes, so if you're traveling and have a handgun, they'll tell you, we'll lock it in the safe, because they don't want guns in the lobby. But they're not going to put you through a metal detector. You see what's happening now. If you've been following, this whole thing now is about getting rid of the guns. Now you're going to be seeing legislation to pass metal detectors. Perhaps in every freaking store is going to require a metal detector now or anywhere there's a group of people. This is billions and billions of dollars. So somebody stood to make a lot of profit off of this disaster. Now this is just one of the intricate details and reasons why maybe this happened. Somebody's going to be making a lot of profit off of that. Ironically, this is terrible for you. Women who are pregnant and they go through a metal detector that could subject the baby to to radiation. So imagine you have these metal detectors everywhere, all these stores, places. Not a good idea. You're going to want to sub for this one because the next story after this is going to completely blow your mind. And you're probably going to think I'm crazy, but after you think about it, it's going to make sense. It's going to start coming together. I'm going to be able to explain to you why they didn't find so many shell casings in the room and yes paddock had help there's no doubt in my mind smoke and mirrors you see they flash lights on those people why they do that orchestrated They were terminated. A panic alone? I don't think so.